And that's a situation where using some far red to move that step along is going to give you a net greater photosynthetic rate than if you were to just keep pushing more light on the front end of this whole process. Okay, so light reactions of photosynthesis. Um, par light, right, so 400 to 700 nanometer, basically visible light, uh, excites a thing called an antenna complex. Uh, and you can think of an antenna complex basically like a solar panel. It's designed to capture photons and turn that light energy into something else. Uh, in the case of the light reactions of photosynthesis, that light energy is captured and transferred through a thing called photosystem two. And when that energy gets to something called the reaction center, the reaction center has a water harvesting complex that can take a molecule of water and split it into its constituent parts. So you end up with hydrogen and oxygen. In doing so, that also frees an electron from that water molecule. And that electron gets passed from complex to complex uh, through something called an electron transport chain. And every step in this chain has increasing electronegativity, which just means uh, it is increasingly uh, enthusiastic, let's say, about pulling an electron towards itself. All right, so this electron moves from photosystem two to a couple of intermediates that you'll probably see in a graphic right here. Uh, and it arrives at another photosystem called photosystem one. And at this point, the electron could keep moving on its own, right? It could move through photosystem one to an enzyme called ferrodoxin NADP reductase. And that energy, that electron, is then consumed in that enzyme by converting NADP with a hydrogen to create NADPH. And NADPH is ultimately the final product that you care about alongside ATP, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, NADPH is biochemical energy, right? And that biochemical energy can then be used to do all kinds of things in plant development. Uh, but foremost, it's going to be used in the creation of sugar, of glucose, right? So to kind of recap, we're taking light energy in the form of power light. We're splitting water to harvest an electron, and that electron is getting passed through an electron transport chain, ultimately to produce biochemical energy in the form of NADPH. Now, if we go back a step to where that electron is being passed through photosystem one, to NADH, um, ferrodoxin NADH reductase, that biochemical process, that step is kind of a bottleneck. It's just kind of slow compared to everything else. And that's where far red comes in. Far red can preferentially excite photosystem one. It has its own antenna complex, just like photosystem two, but photosystem one is better at absorbing far red and utilizing it. So it essentially gives a little energetic boost to that electron and it helps it move through that step more efficiently. Okay, so if you are driving photosynthesis uh, fairly hard and you're harvesting a lot of electrons from a lot of water molecules and that particular step begins to be a bottleneck, that's a situation where using some far red to move that step along is going to give you a net greater photosynthetic rate than if you were to just keep pushing more light on the front end of this whole process, right? That's what the Emerson enhancement effect is. It's when you otherwise have saturated the light reactions of photosynthesis and those steps can't move any faster than they're already moving. At that point, adding more par light is not so good because it just can't go any faster. If you use a little bit of far red to make that particular step at photosystem one happen more efficiently, you will then get a net photosynthetic rate greater than simply adding the equivalent number of photons um, in the range of power.